Welcome to another episode of Homeric. On today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about medieval music history. Medieval music is one of the things that inspires me to create what I create. Medieval music is archaic, but we can give a lot of things to the musicians during this time for creating something that we all use today. So let's get into that. This was an era of kings and queens, where feudalism was running rampant. The medieval ages was also known as the Dark Ages. Let's talk about why that is. Have you ever heard of the Great Fires of Alexandria? That was an event that happened in 48 BCE. This was an event that destroyed knowledge gathered until that point. Science, medicine, art, you name it. And as Christianity was firmly establishing its foundation, we see so much being lost in terms of knowledge. We were entering the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages was where people were looking to God for guidance, for health, for knowledge. It was all based on faith, not truth not science. One of the great things about this time, though, because people were worshipping so fervently, I, as a sound engineer, give a lot of thanks to the medieval period for creating Gothic cathedrals. Not only because I love the architecture, but the sound was meant to invigorate the soul, to inspire you, so that you may pray to the good Lord. Now, of course, as a sound engineer, I'm not thinking about praying to the good Lord. Rather, I am thinking about how to create an ambiance. And we were definitely inspired by Gothic cathedrals to create long reverberations. And it was here, in these Gothic cathedrals, that we would find groups of monks come together and sing what we call a plain chant. Plain chant is a simple song that is meant to worship. And these monks would be singing together all in monophony. Monophony is when you sing one melodic line. So the monks would sing together one melodic line. Like this, for example. This unison was common throughout many cultures. Many hymns were sung in unison, but as time went on, the Catholic Church decided they wanted to record their ideas, and no, they weren't recording like I'm recording here to you, of course not, no. They had to figure out a way to record their music onto paper so that they could pass it on and make sure that the accuracy of the songs that they were intending on singing were true to the original. So here is one of music's greatest creations, the modern music notation. Now, the music that was during the medieval period had looked nothing like it is today. They had these things called nooms, which sort of dictated how a certain word was supposed to be said, and it would inflict a uh, sort of idea of how that word uh, should be performed. Now, nooms were Nothing more than really a way to express the dialect of how you should say words. It was hard to interpret a lot of medieval music because it was a little bit too vague. Try reading music from the medieval period now and you'll be like, the hell is that? Because, <laughs> I mean, I can read rhythm, but there wasn't almost any rhythm that you could interpret. I mean, they had rhythm, but it was nothing like, nothing like the rhythm you'd see in any type of modern music. One of my favorite songs from that period 
was Gaudete. Ain't that beautiful? Gotta love it with those Christmas tunes. <laughs> I should note, um, one of the few composers that we could identify during that time, because, you know, during the medieval ages, a lot of people, when they composed music or created artwork, they didn't attach their name to it, mostly because people during this time attributed their creation to it be coming from God. So God was the creator of their artwork. Unfortunately, we just don't know who wrote a lot of this stuff. But we did find some records of some few composers during this time. One of them was St. Hildegard of Binion, who actually was canonized, I think, in 2012. And uh, wow, it took her a long time to become a saint. <laughs> Talk about, like, playing the long game. <laughs> hey, man. She got it. That's fantastic. Because she deserves it. Hildegard of Binion was really important. She was one of the first composers to implement polyphony. Polyphony is when we use not one voice, but multiple voices. And Hildegard became a master at this. Take a listen. This polyphonic structure was originally called the organum, where we'd have multiple people singing multiple lines, essentially. It's the first iteration of polyphonic music. These organums were capitalizing on improvisation with melodic lines. We started to see the development of the plain chant becoming more immersed in this polyphonic structure. And towards the end of the medieval ages, we started to see instrumentation take new life, rather than just vocals. Because during that time, instruments were considered part of secular music, and if it wasn't anything to do with God, nobody wanted anything to do with it either. Fun fact, some of the instruments that came out of this era were things like the bagpipe. And we had more lutes, uh, the guitar, uh, we had some drums, and the fiddle. If you like this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the Renaissance period next week. Be sure to check that out. If you also enjoy my content, be sure to like and subscribe to Homeric. I like to put out videos regarding history, dark mythology, philosophy, and more. Be sure to stay tuned, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.